Hi guys, this is Andy Morgan from Total Therapy Birmingham once more, here to talk to you finally on insecurities. Um, it's, it's strange to be so cheerful about our insecurities, but what I'd like to give you is a little bit of perspective and a little bit of hope that maybe as a course of this video you find some breaks and openings and ways to understand your insecurities and hopefully start to dissolve them. They are all possible to be dissolved, they can all be worked on, they can all be gotten rid of and you can be free of insecurities and unnecessary fears. Um, there's a, a lovely Chinese concept that everything that has been done to the body can be undone. Um, uh, for those who are more of a Western mind, I think of a chemical reaction. Most chemical reactions and mathematical equations are reversible. Um, so it stands to reason that everything that can go one way within a uh, trauma can be undone. Um, and that's something I firmly believe. There are areas that is more difficult to to believe in that. And yes, okay, you, you lose a limb. You can't really undo that one. But trauma, emotional issues, uh, injuries, on a simple level, um, your body heals. Your body reheals itself every eight years and you regrow an entirely new body every eight years. So if you are able to start your healing process, it might take eight years. But if you live to be 80, if you live to be 100, um, that is a small price to pay to get through those fears and get through those illnesses and get through, through that pain and to heal. Um, and anyone who is at the end of their tether, if someone said I can, uh, you could be healthy in eight years time, they take it, I imagine. Um, the great thing is you, as you go along you heal more than you even realise. You start by healing one thing and you suddenly find lots of things drop away. And you realise how interconnected all of our insecurities are. So where do they come from? And this is a broad brush, but is largely true. They come from your parents, they come from your childhood. And again, not a dig at parents. I will actually go on to defend and, uh, not defend, give the perspective of the parents. It's something that I've recently done for myself and has been a huge shift in helping me heal. Uh, the first stage we tend to do is acceptance, acceptance that we have an insecurity and a fear. We then look at why we have that fear, where did it come from? But that, especially if it's from a parent and it's from an aspect in our life that is still ongoing, our work, um, a personality, uh, an illness, um, we may heal from yesterday, but that doesn't necessarily stop it happening again tomorrow. It gives you a better, uh, not coping strategy, it gives you a better defence because if you can understand where you got it from, you can understand when it starts coming back again. Um, I had a bizarre situation a couple of months ago in a situation that would normally send me angry, send me defensive. And I could quite literally feel the insecurity rising like a tide coming up from my feet and coming up and coming up and coming up. But because of the training I'd done, rather than dive straight into it, which is what most of us do, or live in it, you can't see an insecurity coming when you're standing in the middle of it. You can't see what's around you unless you step outside and look back at yourself. So I could feel these insecurities rising and rising and rising and going, oh, well, this is, this is defensive, I'm going to get angry, and this is, they're accusing me and all these kind of things. And I just went, hang on. No, they're not. It's the insecurity that was telling me how to behave. It was telling me what they were telling me. So I ignored it. And I didn't listen to my insecurity, I listened to the person who was talking and I realised that they were just trying to help me, 
the reason why the insecurity came in is they were trying to help me in a way, in the same way as the person who used to help me that caused my insecurity. A little convoluted, but it makes sense. If you understand where your insecurities come from, then you know or have a better understanding of what triggers them. And then you can set an insecurity, and insecurity is actually a positive thing, you can set an insecurity to say, tell me when I start to react to this. Tell me when I start to become defensive. And you can use your insecurities for a positive. You can use your insecurities against your... your you can use positive insecurities against negative insecurities. And it works. I can't tell you how, and the process that you go through is something that you have to go through with emotional therapy. And you have to go through the process, and um, it takes time, and it takes heart. But it's worth it. Without a doubt. So, our insecurities largely come from our parents. Why? Because they were the biggest influence in our life at the stage when we were learning and we were growing up. Um, like it or lump it, you are either the direct correlation to or the direct opposite of your parents. If you had two parents who were the direct opposite to each other, you are probably the opposite of each of them. So if your dad was dominating, you'll either be dominating or submissive. If your mother was submissive, you'll either be dominating or submissive. Um, for various reasons and in different ways. Uh, I had a client the other day who said that she was fastidiously tidy. And I said, pointed out that that was because of her of her family. She went, no, 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 my, parent, my family was really messy. It was nothing like my family. I said, so she became tidy because she had a messy family. Her partner was messy because his family was fastidiously tidy. So they had, in turn, subconsciously become the direct opposites of their families and, in turn, the direct opposites of each other. Um, but I digress once again. I like to. Now the the revelation with this and the thought process from this came from a spirit science video that I linked in my last video, and I'll link again in the description of this one. And it comes from it's a, it's a chakra concept. So for those of you who are unfamiliar or um, uncomfortable with chakra as a concept, please bear with me. Because even if you don't like the terminology of chakra, the other phrases and the other words that I will use might trigger something in you. So if I start talking about the base chakra, but I start talking about fear, and you may suddenly go, oh, well, I don't know about base chakras, but fear I understand. Everybody understands fear. Everyone lives with fears. Um, so the the... The gist of the chakra video from Spirit Science is that when you are born, you only have three, the three main lower chakras, um, seven in the body. So you have your your base chakra, which is affected by fear and damaged by fear. You have your sacral chakra, which is related to um, security and likewise insecurity and sexual energy. And you have your solar plexus chakra, which is related to willpower. Um, above that, your fourth chakra is your heart, related to love. But we'll focus on the first three for today. To be honest, we'll probably focus on the first two. Um, willpower mainly comes in with the gruesome twosomes. As any parent knows, a child who wants to pick up and touch and find and grab and see and ask about everything. They have willpower, they have strength of will, and they want to explore, they want to know what that is. Um, but we'll get onto that later because there's a, a very interesting ripple effect when you start to take things away from the child. So we are based on, on fear. Um, babies, when they're first born, are seen like unexploded bombs, especially to first time parents. And they have no idea what to do with them. We have you have these books, you have this advice, you have parents and friends and family going, do this, do this, do this. Babies only need, when they're first born, three things. Four. 
when they cry, they want something. When they don't cry, they're fine. You, when they cry, you pick them up. You change them. You feed them. You put them down. And believe it or not, when, you, when a first child is first born, those are the only four actions that you do. Pick them up, change them, feed them, put them down. Um, you just do that in three to four hour cycles, which is why most parents look like zombies. But what I'm getting at is parenting, or the needs of the child are only based on being unclean. So um, even at birth, we have an understanding that risk of infection, being uncomfortable, being hungry, starving, um, and sleep, healing, growing. Shortly after, within some period of time, you'll start to notice that your child just wants to be held. Um, I skipped a bit. So the ba these base three related to food, cleanliness, and sleep, um, or warmth, I should say, or being comfortable, all relate to fundamental fears that we are born with. If I'm ill or if I'm dirty, I might die. If I'm hungry, I might die. If I'm cold or uncomfortable or I don't feel safe, this is where that ties into the insecurity one, I might die. The third one comes in with our, related to our sacral chakra of security. If I am not looked after, if I do not have someone to protect me, I might die. You're noticing a pattern here. So a lot of uh, everything that we have, we have done, all the insecurities that we have in our life, will have been based on fears and insecurities based on those fears um, or ways of behaving based on those fears but if you can understand that as a starter and you can start to look back at what your insecurities are based on and where they're based on two things will happen you'll stop blaming the people in your life day to day because they might be nothing to do with those insecurities you might stop reacting to triggers you also might stop being as much you might you might stop um, being as emotional to people um, when it's not their fault they just happen to trigger your insecurities it also gives the ability to look back and start to heal them and there's a great exercise we do in emotional therapy taught through my school total therapy training taught a total therapy group where you go through your life between the ages of one and seven, uh, eight and fourteen, and do them in seven year blocks and try to go through minute by minute, day by day, hour by hour if you can, uh, all the events that happened and see where your triggers lie. And a lot of them will come in early life. Pre seven is a very crucial time for, for child development um, and then seven to fourteen and so on and so forth. But when you can do that, and when you can understand the triggers, then you can start to dissolve them. You can start to understand where they come from. And at the very least, you can understand that they're not Bob's fault, because Bob sounded just like your dad. Or they're not Sandra's fault, because they sounded just like your mother. Or Bob sounded like your mother, and Sandra sounded like your dad. Both can work. So that's my challenge for the video. We're actually going back to challenges again. See if you can spot your emotional reactions. Spot when you get emotional. And if you have people that you trust around you, ask them to tell you. Uh, look at your reactions. Was your reaction proportionate to the, to, to the response, to, to what happened, to the trigger? Um, does someone say one thing and you fly off the handle? Is that proportionate? Is that fair? I'm not saying is it right, but look at the why. And start to look at yourself honestly, openly, and going back to looking at yourself in the mirror. Looking at yourself truthfully and through unfiltered eyes. 
and see where that takes you. That word comes out. See where that takes you. Um, I'll leave you with that. I've been Andy Morgan from Total Therapy Birmingham. Have a wonderful day. The sun is shining here again and I'm going to go and enjoy it. I'll see you soon.